For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney and welcome to HetNet Happenings where we take a look at all things DAS, Wi-Fi, small cell and much more. Welcome back to HetNet Happenings. We've got a great show for you this week. Now, a few weeks ago, I was out in Atlanta to moderate a panel for the Wireless Technology Forum. But while I was there, I was able to spend a few hours with AT&T, which has a number of pretty unique facilities there in Midtown. You know, at RCR Wireless News, we spend a lot of time covering the Internet of Things and its applications for consumers, enterprises, and industries. AT&T is one of the global leaders in IoT with major investments in consumer-facing products and industry products like its global SIM card, which has tremendous utility in verticals like uh, container shipping, for instance. And that a connected vehicle is considered a subset of the Internet of Things, AT&T is also active in that space with its Drive Studio. So with most projections agreeing that we'll have something like 50 billion connected objects sending data over the various networks by the year 2020, I wanted to give you an idea of what AT&T is doing with IoT. In this first clip, we're going to take a look at the Digital Life product line, which is geared towards smart home automation and security. This is something I've actually used a good deal, and it really is an incredibly useful product. So now let's hear from Betsy Francis, who's the AT&T Mobility AVP of Sales and Marketing for Digital Life. For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm joined today by Betsy Francis, the Area Vice President of Sales and Marketing for AT&T's Digital Life product line. So Betsy, thank you so much for having us to your Midtown Atlanta offices, and I'm excited to learn a little bit more about Digital Life. So as we begin, could you please tell us, just uh, give us an overview of the products? Absolutely. Thanks so much for being here, Sean. AT&T Digital Life is a smart home security and automation solution. It offers traditional, professionally monitored security, just like you're familiar with. It also offers automated solutions such as camera solutions, energy, door locks, water controls. And we are bringing IoT devices to smart homes everywhere. So we launched a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago to be exact. We're in 83 markets nationwide and we have been met with a tremendous amount of success and we have a lot of great assets that we leverage here at AT&T that have, have contributed to that success. And I know one of those markets is uh, Austin, Texas where our company is based because I've, I've had the, the experience of using the, uh, the door locks and the thermostat controls but for the people who aren't familiar could you just give us sort of an idea of the user interface and then how it relates to the actual products that would be in your home? Absolutely. The app itself is really the hero of the device. In fact, um, the traditional home security and solutions that you have in the home are, are, uh, can be found elsewhere. It's the app that really brings the magic together. And so through the app, you can log in and be welcomed through the home screen with alerts that are happening in your home. You can um, have a home screen that features video and uh, other of your f favorite activities right there in your home. Through your app, you can control and personalize your solution. So if things that are important to you that you want notifications, such as when a door opens or when the alarm is armed or disarmed, you can set, set up notifications to be received uh, through text or email. You can do things like schedule tasks to occur at certain times. So maybe you want lights to come on and off at sunrise and sunset. You can set those programs to automatically occur. You can uh, set a connected program which says, when this activity happens, I want these other things to follow, such as when my garage door opens, I want the front door to unlock, I want the camera to take a snapshot, I'd love for the lights to come on, the air conditioning to set, and so a series of connected programs. So the magic happens within the, the app, and um, a lot of it can be uh, programmed so that you're not even having to do much throughout the day, that your system is truly becoming smart and doing uh, doing things for you. You know, I mentioned that I had uh, used some of them before. I have not used the uh, the water specific. Yeah. So w what exactly does that enable? Yeah, so that's uh, super cool, especially if you've ever had a water leak and damage related to it, you will really appreciate this solution. And so we have a small uh, sensor that can be placed where water might become present, such as near a washing machine, a hot water heater, um, in a basement. So this simple uh, water sensor that looks just like a hockey puck almost, 
um, can be easily set anywhere. It then sends you an alert when um, uh, water is detected. And so you can have an alert be sent to you as well as with our water control solution, you can actually uh, send an alert or send a notification to the water shutoff device to actually shut the, the water main off to the house. And so if you're traveling and you have a water incident and you can't address it physically because you're not physically there, the home will take care of itself for you. So it's really pretty smart. And, you know, you mentioned IoT earlier, obviously a really hot buzzword right now, the Internet of Things, and I think we're still maybe a few years away from fully realizing what that's going to fully mean yes. when everything around us is connected. But from the consumer's pers perspective, wearables and smart homes seem to have really gotten the earliest adoption. How do you see smart home developing over the next few years? Yes, absolutely. So, in fact, we uh, just a little plug on a couple of wearables that that we have um, today. You can, um, on your Apple Watch, you can uh, interact with your Digital Life smart home. So that's pretty cool. In terms of um, uh, evolving smart uh, IoT products, evolving with the smart home. Um, our, our system is a platform, right? That is the, the asset which we bought a couple years ago when we first set out to begin this business. And it is a platform that we could attach things to in the future. We recently made an announcement that uh, Nest users will soon be able to connect their Nest thermostat to the digital life platform. <clears throat> so that's just a, a good example of how through APIs we can invite partners in to come join us and connect their devices. So whether that's a uh, fitness device or a health device or um, an, an energy, a light bulb, you name it, uh, the, the platform is just that. It allows us to uh, provide these APIs to developers and, and invite other products in to connect to a single platform with a single app. Well, I bet with that sort of open access, you could really see some interesting uh, products uh, <laughs> down the line. But you, and that's I, I'm curious about that development process and, and just sort of the general movement from the lab to the commercial marketplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a, a few years back when we uh, were first chartered with uh, getting into this new business, the chairman said, go find the next big revenue opportunity. And so um, a smart home was where we landed. And so uh, we delivered a strategy. We made the decision whether we were going to build or buy. And we, we set out to buy a platform. And so that really fast forwarded us into the space a bunch. And so that gave our developers a uh, sandbox with which to scale and uh, certify, so it's a UL certified platform that, that um, can be taken, um, uh, uh, accepted and, and certified in any uh, standard security monitoring system. The, um, the developers then um, uh, figured out what was the best RF technology that would support and interact well together. So some of the, the work that the engineers had to do is um, you know how many <laughs> how many uh, wireless uh, connections can we have in a single control box, right? What is the right interaction, um, and what what um, uh, categories uh, of devices exist or, or um, have ample enough um, availability to, to to tie to some of these? So we chose wireless devices such uh, or wireless uh, capabilities such as Wi-Fi, Z-Wave. We have a couple of proprietary radios, and we have. Um, the um, 3G, of course, is the main connectivity back to the home. So uh, this really provided a really nice um, uh, kind of uh, canvas for our developers to say, hey, now I can go find devices that, uh, that work with each of these RF capabilities and, and start to uh, connect the dots. So, so the market, the category is growing quite a bit, and um, uh, we've really found it quite easy to uh, be able to connect with partners that are doing the same thing. So Betsy, we talked a little bit earlier about the uh, functionality around the water component of digital life, but could you just sort of walk us through some of the features of the other uh, products in the line? Oh, absolutely, yes. And, and I'll, I'll start with uh, the, the most popular and, and kind of uh, work my way through. So video has been extremely popular. So the ability for folks to keep an eye on what matters to them most. And so that could be their home, their, the asset of their home, but it's uh, typically uh, people and pets. So watching children come home from school, seeing them come in, seeing perhaps a service person come to the door. Uh, outdoor ca camera has been extremely popular. And so 
uh, we continue to enhance and amplify that solution with um, better resolution and wider field of view and and so you'll see um, you know great enhancements um, uh, invested in the in the video solution the uh, the next quite popular one which we see this also as kind of an extension of security is the the door solution and so we have a, fr a front door you can, we call it a front door lock. you can put it on a back door on a garage door it's a, a door lock solution that um, you can create pin codes or just uh, allow access to somebody from afar. That is another great solution if you have service people or you uh, really just to kind of put your keys aside and not have to use a key and know who's coming in and out of your door. That's also coupled with a, a garage door solution, which the use case for that is one that's uh, quite familiar to everyone, which is <laughs> you drive off to work and you think, did I shut the door? So this solves for that, right? So you can either set a program where the door is shutting automatically when you've driven away, or it, um, uh, you can just check status of it and close it from afar. So that's a really popular solution. The energy package has a really a lot of, um, takes a lot of different forms. With energy, you can control your lighting. So we have uh, light switch controls. We have outlet plugs, so all sorts of small size appliances can be plugged in for control. We have thermostat and um, even outdoor lighting control. So at this time of year with holiday, if you, when you have holiday lighting and you want to be Clark Griswold, you can uh, control your lighting through this outdoor plug. And then the water detection we talked about. So those are like the categories that customers uh, see value in, willing to pay for, and uh, really get the most engagement with. And all of that functionality runs right through the Digital Life mm -hmm. app? Right through the Digital Life app, everything, wow. yeah. So the security is the foundation, and then all of these solutions just add on to the to the security platform. So it's, and they all are integrated, which is nice. So you can have programs where uh, both security functions and the other functions are talking to each other. So for instance, if a security incident occurs, you can tell the camera to take a snapshot if the, if the alarm sounds, or um, if motion is detected, take a camera snapshot. So it's a really nice um, integrated solution that truly, once you personalize and customize, can manage itself. Wow. So as smart home adoption continues to pick up, uh, what's next for digital life? Great. Thanks for asking. So. Um, the connected car is a really interesting integration for us, right? And so we've, uh, uh, you'll see some developments if you haven't already with um, how do we take the connected car and make it a seamless part of, of the uh, digital life smart home. And, and that could be something uh, as simple as geofencing where you've, you've pulled off um, for work and without having to take any action, your home shuts down for the day. And as you arrive home, it welcomes you by turning on. Um, and the, the car becomes just another screen basically for your digital life app. So, so the car is pretty hot. The um, uh, uh, personal security is um, a solution that uh, we introduced recently that is in trial and it is a, um, pretty much the home security elements that you take with you. So all the, the favorite features that you uh, value in your home security you can take with you. So uh, for instance I'm a runner so I like to take that out with me on a run in the event I don't come back in an hour it can notify someone that perhaps there's trouble. So um, personal security is coming to available to all of our uh, customers here uh, soon once we come out of trial. So that's a really nice extension. We talked about um, some of the API uh, capabilities, so Nest being one of them, and you'll see uh, more partners uh, discussed and introduced here in the near future. Very good, and I also uh, think I heard that you are all expanding the offering into uh, multi-unit dwellings, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. So we have... Um, for uh, the first little bit since we launched, we were in single family homes only. And um, we just had a lot of interest from folks that, that lived in a condo or apartment or a townhome. And so uh, earlier this year, we, in, we opened that availability up to someone who lives in a condo or apartment. And so it's a really nice solution for them to, um, for uh, keeping an eye on their space and a little bit of protection from, you know, uh, in those environments sometimes, especially in a rental, rental, there could be a lot of folks who have access to that uh, unit and so it's kind of nice to, not just for the homeowner, but um, even builders are interested in actually putting these systems into their communities to, um, uh, you know, have kind of easy access and control over, over those units. Well, the IoT really is an exciting thing. It sure and is. Betsy, thank you so much for giving us a front row look at what AT&T is doing with digital life. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Smart Home's been an early hit when it comes to IoT adoption, 
And as I mentioned earlier, another big area of adoption has been inside your vehicle. While the ultimate end of the connected car is fully autonomous driving, we're still years away from seeing that widespread, particularly at the consumer level. But in the meantime, connectivity is changing the way we interact with our vehicles from entertainment platforms to safety measures. AT&T built what it calls the Drive Studio in Atlanta to one, develop connected vehicle solutions, and two, let automakers come in and collaborate on the solutions that best fit their designs. In this next clip, we're going to meet Todd Rose, who's the lead product development manager for AT&T Drive, which is the company's connected car platform. In addition to taking a look at some of the solutions that have come out of the Drive Studio, we're also going to learn about how this technology can be integrated with smart home technology to offer a really interesting experience for the end user. Now let's go inside the AT&T Drive Studio. For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney and I'm here at the AT&T Drive Studio with Todd Rose, who's the Lead Product Development Manager here at the Drive Studio. So Todd, thank you so much for bringing us inside to take a look at the exciting work you do here. And for the folks that may not be familiar, tell us a little bit about the facility and what the goal is. Sure. So the AT&T Drive Studio is located in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're right across from actually Georgia Tech. Um, and this area within Atlanta is called Midtown and very innovative. A lot of uh, startups are, are going on here, a lot of uh, innovation. We have an incubator uh, across the street and obviously Georgia Tech brings a huge amount of uh, uh, resources, not only to at t but to the community. And so tell us about what we're sitting in here. You told me it's called a buck, which was a, a yes. term I wasn't familiar with. Yes, so it's, it's, we call it the buck affectionately. And um, this is really uh, a way that we can demo to our partners and our uh, customers the services that we're, we're building on top of the LTE service. So <clears throat> very easy for me to move different hardware into this. We have all automotive grade hardware in here. And uh, if there's any changes that need to be done, can be done very easy, much easier than if we had to do a, uh, a car. And then uh, certainly it's, it's a great tool for us to use to show our customers and partners how, how we're evolving in this space. Now I'm really excited to learn a little bit about AT&T Drive, which is your connected car platform. So as we discuss that, can you give us a, a high level overview of AT&T Drive and then we'll jump into some of the features that it enables. Sure, and AT&T Drive is, is a very modular platform. It's applications and services that are intended for the driver to use in a safe manner. Um, one of the things that at t has really uh, tried to do and the foundation of the Drive Studio is, is to create services in the car that uh, don't increase distraction in the vehicle. So you're familiar with the at t It Can Wait campaign and texting and driving. We certainly would like you know, people to put their phones in their glove compartment or in their console and be able to communicate with the car and and certainly send test messaging or voice memos in a safe manner. What we've done is we've taken applications and we call drive enabled them. So the definition of that is really to make that application, though it may be a common application used today on your iPhone or your Android device, um, but uh, in a way that you can actually do it, you know, building it in a way that you can actually uh, use that app in the car in a safe manner. Okay, so you just seamlessly sort of integrate the, the mobile functions that we're all used to into the vehicle and in a way that's seamless and safe for the driver. Right. Trying to, trying to change that behavior where, you know, you have a cell phone in your hand and you're down, your eyes are buried into the cell phone. Um, that's not conducive to driving. So moving it to more of a, a service that you can operate in the vehicle safely. Okay, so I recognize some of these icons on screen here, but walk us yeah. through what's available here. So we have, you know, we selected certain applications to build to the platform. We're not limited to a number of applications, but we tried to get, you know, something from every genre so that we can show, you know, different services. Um, like I say, the platform is very modular. So if one of our customers come in here, and most of our customers are the car companies, manufacturers, um, they come in here and they like a certain aspect of our drive platform. 
then we can certainly pull that out and integrate it into their, into their vehicles. So tell us a little bit about, I see Glimpse down yeah. there. I recall that as a uh, sort of a location sharing application. That's right. And it makes a lot of sense to have it in the front seat of a car. Uh, especially if you're driving to an appointment or driving to meet someone, you can easily send a glimpse and they can actually track um, your progress as you get closer. We took Glimpse one step further and worked with, with Glimpse to create a pick-me-up app. So within your circle of friends, you would actually just drag and drop your picture, to which would be on your phone, um, to the person that wants to be picked up, drag it and drop it to the person that's going to be picking you up, they can get that notification from their watch or on their cell phone, get in their car, and it would automatically migrate into the car. And then the car's GPS would navigate the driver to that person's location, and that person would be able to see as they, uh, as they get closer. Right, and you touched on it earlier when you mentioned the It Can Wait campaign, but you know, texting and driving, big problem in, in Austin where I live, very expensive ticket if you get caught doing it. Yeah. So how does that process work with AT&T Drive? I, I know text message probably not the right thing to call it, but how would right. I send that? So what we do with the platform is we voice enable these services. So voice is not anything new in a vehicle, but what we try to do is use natural speech voice engines um, you can actually tell this car, and I can demo it for you, um, to send a text message. And that text message could be anybody in my contact list, or I can dictate a phone number to send that text message to. All of this is a, is a, a voice communication with the car, pushing your voice button, uh, talking your car, and then sending that message. No need to take your eyes off, the, off what's in front of you or your hands off the steering wheel feature for the driver, but I know you guys also have some fantastic features for the passengers, uh, particularly in your infotainment suite. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, we bring Wi-Fi to the car, and that's not uncommon. We're seeing that in a lot of vehicles, certain some of the, the vehicles AT&T is providing LTE service to, but Wi-Fi in the car um, can connect up to multiple devices, utilizing a high-gain antenna that's sitting on the roof, so much better than pairing your phone, or pardon me, creating a hotspot on your phone. If you look at your phone, you know, the antenna on your phone is really intended to support your phone, where the antenna on a car can support multiple devices. So you're seeing up to eight devices being connected uh, in vehicles. Um, we're also working on bringing content to the back seat. So when you think about AT&T and our DirecTV merger, that's an aspect that we're looking at bringing, you know, certainly that relationship that we have with um, DirecTV into the back seat of the car. Right, and I know a lot of this technology is, is uh, selected by OEMs and incorporated into new vehicles, but I think there's also a solution available for people that might not be able to buy a new car, sort of an aftermarket sure. solution, right? Sure, so you hear OBD2, which is Onboard Diagnostics 2 plugins. These are, um, we're all familiar with um, some of the commercials where the insurance companies are asking you to plug this into your OBD2 to um, plug. We have, we have actually at our stores, we're selling an audio box service, which uh, you plug in your car, all the information that's gathered on that is private to you. You can do driver scores, so if you have multiple drivers in the family, you can score them. You can create geofences, so if you have a teen driver in the family and you don't want them to go outside a certain area, you can be text message if they break that geofence. We also, they have DTC codes, which are trouble diagnosis code. Most people would recognize those as a check engine light in their car, but this would actually tell you what the issue of your car and if you need to take it to the dealership right away or it can wait a couple of days to do it. Um, it can trip map, it can show some um, you know, fuel uh, and oil change requirements, things like that. So Todd, just if, if we take this as a, as a whole, from your perspective, what's really the transformative power of a connected car solution like this? So there, there's so much, and we're just starting to really break through and, and see all of the services that you can bring in the car. Um, very similar to phones, when we started to get smartphones and getting more bandwidth to the smartphone, it's just the amount of services exploded in, in what we could do with our phone. The same thing is about to happen to the car. So we're, 
we're looking at this in so many different aspects as far as you know providing services to the OEMs like billing and you know working with them with security and those aspects and also services that the the consumer can can utilize um, firmware over the air update remote starting uh, your car from anywhere uh, or unlocking the car from anywhere controlling different uh, other cloud connected services uh, like your home, your home automation service. So there's just uh, so many aspects. And what we're trying to do is take these applications and if they can operate without the driver even engaging them, that's really the, the point where you're, you're not even distracting the driver and these applications are functioning and providing information to the driver um, that they want, either through predictive learning or through electronic means like a geofence. So when we talk about the, the diagnostic capabilities, is it, is it plausible to say that the car could figure out what's wrong with it and then perhaps present the driver with uh, options for services? Your, your manufacturer recommends X body shop or X engine repair shop, which is 3.7 miles away. Right, and even set the appointment up for you. You know, ask you if you want to set the appointment up with your preferred dealer. That absolutely can happen. The other thing is the car companies can pull certain diagnostics off of the car and catch defective parts before they become uh, uh, more, before more cars come down the assembly line. Um, they can get that, that item repaired or bring that person or that car in for service if it's a safety type uh, issue. So Todd, tell us how the connected car fits into the broader IOT ecosystem? So it's, it's really only one component. When you look at all of the different areas that we're putting SIM modules in, you're thinking about your home with home automation, you're thinking M Health, you're thinking industrial, which would mean you know, containers on container ships, uh, aircraft, um, tractors that are running in the field. Um, there's just so many areas where you, we see a benefit in connecting those devices. It could be as simple as a trash can you know, where it's full empty and, you know, when to dispatch a truck. It could be a wheelchair. Is, is the person in the wheelchair comfortable as pressures, you know, equal uh, within, you know, within their body? And how could they adjust that to make the, the um, person more comfortable? So things I would have never imagined that we are connecting today. It's just amazing. So, Sean, I'm going to show you a couple of demos now. We talked about uh, text messaging. Uh, and also we have voice memo. So if you have, you know, dialogue that you want to send to somebody that, you know, maybe not captured very well in a text message, you, you can, in this car, in the demo, send, send a voice memo. So let me give you a demo. Send a voice memo to Todd. Hey, I'm sitting here in the buck with Sean from RCR, and we're doing a demo. Do you want to send this memo? Yes. Sending. Message sent. So, because I sent it to myself, it's going to come to my phone, and in a few seconds, there it is. And we're doing a demo. I'll play it again. I have my volume low. I'm sitting here in the car with Sean and with RCR Wireless, and we're doing a demo. So I never had to engage my, my cell phone, nor did I have to invoke an app and step through an app and, and uh, you know, record the, the memo. So very, very safe uh, way to send a message to somebody. And in the entire process, I would not have to, uh, again, uh, lost attention in what I was doing. So another, another aspect of the connected car is we've connected Digital Life. So the connected car is a cloud-based service. Um, and there's a huge number of advantages of having a cloud-based service. You can think about, you know, even Moore's Law, 18 months, computing power would, would double. Uh, when in a car, by the time it comes off the the um, assembly line, you know, some of the equipment may be close to being obsolete. 
Whereas if you have this in the cloud, you know, you got a cloud-based service where you can have compute as a service, storage as a service, all of these services, and those computers can be updated, you know, very regularly, and the car can benefit from it. So what we've done with Digital Life, Digital Life being a cloud-based service, at t Drive being a cloud-based service, we've connected those. And I can actually control my home, similar to what I can do on my cell phone, but this way I can do it through voice. So let me give you an example. What is the status of my home? Checking on the status of your home. Your garage door is open. Your home is locked. Your alarm is off. Your house camera is on. Your house lights are off. Close my garage door. Closing the garage door. There you go. Close it down. So you can control your home from your car. You can get the status of it. You can. Um, we've even gone so far as to create geofences to where you're driving away from your home. It invokes a profile that you set, like your garage door closed, house locked, alarm set, lights turned off. And then the same way if you're approaching your home, um, you get to your, close to your driveway, open the garage door, turn on the outside lights, um, disarm the alarm, unlock the door, then you come home to a safe house. See? Well, Todd, I really appreciate you telling us about the work that's being done here at the AT&T Drive Studio and uh, letting us take a look under the hood, as it were. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sean. Well, a big thanks to Todd and Betsy and the folks at AT&T for inviting us inside some of their Atlanta offices. And to the folks at home, I appreciate you joining me for HeadNet Happenings, and I hope you learned as much as I did from taking a look inside some of AT&T's IoT development labs. We've got some really great shows coming up for you, including a discussion around antenna concealment. And then later in February, I'm headed over to Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, so we'll be sure to take you into that important show. In the meantime, I'm Sean Kinney. See you next week. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR-TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.